The concept of energy is one of the most important topics in science. In everyday life, we think of energy in terms of fuel for transportation, electricity for lights and food for consumption. However, these ideas do not really define energy. They merely tell us that fuels are needed to do the job and those fuels provide us with something called energy. A moving hammer, coiled spring, paperweight on the desk, boiling water all represent different forms of energy. Moving a hammer can push a nail into the wall. Coiled spring can move the hand of the clock. Weight can move another weight and boiling water can cook an egg. We can think of energy as the capacity an object has to perform work. When is the work really done? When things are moved around to define it precisely. Work is done by a force acting on an object when the point of application of that force moves through some distance and force has components along the line of motion. Work is equal to force multiplied by displacement. Let me apply some force to this duster. Will it move? It does not move. Let me change my position and apply the same force. Will it move now? Yes, it is moving now. I can change it even more and move the duster very easily. When I apply force at an angle, does all the force contribute to its movement forward or only part of it? When force is applied at an angle, some part of it acts horizontally and some of it vertically. How much of it is horizontal depends on the angle it is applied. If angle between force and horizontal is theta, then cos theta part of that force will act in horizontal direction and rest in vertical direction. Force is applied to duster and it moves along the way. In which situation our force was most effective? For that, we need to consider not only magnitude but also its direction. If we assume that we applied the same force in all three scenarios, in the third case, we could move the duster easily than the second one. In the first scenario, we could not move the duster at all. So, in analyzing forces to determine the work they do, we must consider the vector nature of forces. We also need to know how far that duster moves along the table if we have to calculate work required to cause that motion. Do we need to do more work if we have to push the duster 2 meters instead of 1 meter? If I pull this duster with constant force F at an angle theta for a distance d, then work done by me on this duster is a product of component of force in the direction of the displacement and the magnitude of displacement. If this is the definition of work, then can you tell me how much work I do on this heavy book if I hold it continuously for 5 minutes? Your tired arms at the end of 5 minutes might lead you to think that you have done considerable amount of work on this book. According to our definition, as the book did not move, there is no work done. You exert force to support the book, not to move it. By the way, you do work holding the book as your muscles are internally contracting to relaxing continuously. This is all internal to your body and hence, Body does work internally on itself rather than on the book. Coming back to our work calculation, force does no work on the object if it does not move. We have a value of d equal to 0. As per equation, we get 0 work. What will be work done when force applied is perpendicular to the object's displacement? 0 as cos of 90 is 0. As you can see, normal force on the object and work done by the force of gravity on the object are both 0 as they are perpendicular to the displacement. Work is a scalar quantity 
and its units are force multiplied by length. Therefore, SI unit of work is Newton meter. This combination of units is so frequent that it has been given a name of its own, the joule, that is J. Summary We learnt that work is done by a force acting on an object when the point of application of that force moves through some distance and force has components along the line of motion. Work is equal to force multiplied by displacement. Work is a scalar quantity. Its unit is joule.